last year we had talked on social media branding. Uh, we actually had a guest uh, or a co-presenter, Mr. Shane Halls, who came from Waters Corporation. And so what ended up happening was we had taken up a, a smidgen of, yeah, we had taken a smidgen of, of the social media branding presentation. Um, there was a smidgen on LinkedIn. And so I wanted to, you know, of course, give some different disclaimers in the sense of, yes, when we're looking at this social media branding, um, we're looking at it in the aspect of utilizing which should be the number one platform that you should be focused on right now if we're talking about career development, professional development, going off to graduate school. And so essentially it should be linked in. So, um, but the other good part about this is, is that when we're talking about the social media branding at its core, it's then up to you to then transform what that core social media branding for yourself looks like into other spaces, right? So whether you want that social media, that 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 um, core to look like the same for Facebook, which it shouldn't look the same for LinkedIn, which it probably won't look the same thing for Twitter, but if you at least have a core, uh, a core component, then you can actually work from that. Slide show. So what is a brand? And I just, yeah, you guys know if you've been here for a while that I don't really like um, just talking to myself in this box. It can be kind of hard. So I'm wondering also uh, from where you sit at um, what you think about what an actual brand is. And so, yeah, um, Melanie, what is your your understanding or idea of a brand. And I ask that because I know how you feel about companies in which you might put that you might end up working for and what they stand for. So what do you, for you, what, what is a brand? Melanie Jemerson? Yes, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, now I can. Okay, yeah. Um... When it comes down, especially to when I think about like brands, um, I see them as things that are almost as like markers of what makes people's individuality um, unique. Um, in the job force, um, what you're marketing to a position or a job to show what you have to offer for that company. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as personal brands, uh, this is what I wanted to learn more about too. Yeah. Say that last part. Sorry, um, I said um, as far as personal brands, that's where I don't know that much about. Okay, well that's fair. That's fair. I uh, which basically everything that you said is definitely true. Um, I think when you're going to have to have a mesh between uh, personal and professional, in the sense of when we think about um, things like values, ethics, morals. Um, those things have to be blended into your actual brand. Um, but for the context of this conversation, we're really looking at what a brand is in the sense of you being that product that an employer, potential employer, wants to pick up and purchase. Um, so the Chartered Institute of Marketing defines a brand as a set of physical attributes of a product or service uh, together with the beliefs and expectations surrounding it. Um, and, and I think that this is extremely important because who wants to purchase something off of misadvertisement? Um, I'm just coming back from vacation and yesterday when I was leaving um, BWI Airport, I was talking to my mentor on the phone and they were telling me, we were having a, a general conversation about employment and being really like your authentic self. And, um, you know, they're extremely talented at what they do. And we were having the, also the conversation about how, you know, this individual had gone up for a particular position. And at the end of the day, that um, the person that got the job was somebody that was more of a smoozer, said what the, what, what the panelists wanted to hear. And then they didn't even last on the job for a year. 
Like, can you <laughs> can you imagine that? So it's almost like you're going to be found out anyway. So that's why I always try to lead and always try to empower you guys to lead with your most authentic self because nine times out of ten, um, you really can't hide it, right? At some at, at some point. And so why not brand yourself as authentic as possible so that you're not wasting that employer's time and most importantly, not wasting your time um, when it comes down to um, different uh, job opportunities, as well as if you're going off to graduate school, right? Because you're also your own brand packaging uh, when you are going to uh, do your uh, 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 problem statement. Um, when you are going to market yourself to that graduate advisor that has to, somebody in the department has to pick you up or else you're not even accepted into the program. So yeah, so those different types of things really do matter. Um, I always also tell people, you know, I get a lot of different compliments and or I might have a different type of work ethic than others, um, it, but I always make it very clear, you know, like I do this this way because I'm my own person, I'm my own, brand. I'm a Meredith, right? So I just happen to work at this institution, but I know how I was raised to do certain things. So those types of things, like I said, can be extremely valuable. Are you willing to build and manage your brand? Um, and then um, in, 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 in that, what is actually required? Um, a brand presence on social media requires a consistent profile and brand image across social media platforms and direct connections with followers and the brand voice and tone. So that of course is written up as in a sense of it being a product, but you being a product is also the same thing. Uh, when we talk about um, across different media platforms, we could talk about um, Melanie, how you uh, just did research um, and then did presentations at a conference, right? You're Jimerson across that conference, which is that platform of the work that you're putting forth. Um, and then, you know, when you talk about followers uh, in the brand voice and tone, what does your brand say? Do people generally say good things about you? Do people generally say hardworking, good, uh, you know, good morals, um, team player, those types of things also, if you think about, if, if you also think about it, are also you being uh, or being parts or attributes of you, the actual product. Typically, a strong brand presence on social um, media is associated with an engaged audience and loyal brand followers. Uh, social media branding. Social media branding combines uh, a brand's tangible and, intang and intangible attributes with the powers of social media ch media channels. Um, here, of course, the optimal goal. We're going to try to align branding, which is you, and social media activity, 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 LinkedIn, uh, can strengthen the public perception, which would actually be the employer of a brand and build trust between the brand and its target audience, um, the actual general workforce and or um, that network that you see that you're a part of on LinkedIn. How to create a strong brand presence. Um, what do you do every day at your work or internship, um, big or small? Are the puzzle pieces uh, used to create the picture of your brand? Um, so we want to consider these three questions. Are you a hard worker? Uh, do you do more than ask? Are you on time? Are you a team player? Um, one of the things, and I'm just so proud of you guys, the, uh, well, I'm, I'm proud of all Dell State students, but I, I'm also really proud of the scholars that um, took apart, took upon themselves to really um, apply themselves in the faculty scholar research um, this year. And so when I saw, when I'm looking at this uh, top piece, when it goes to work or internship, big or small, um, what do you think that you would end up taking away from the faculty scholar research program that now adds to your brand besides just research? Maritza? Maritza, are you here? Okay. Tiffany Oliver, are you here? 
Yeah, I'm here. I don't know if okay. you can hear me. So what would you take away from um, the, the project and being able to present at Atlantic City Fashion Week? What what do you now know that you can add to the Oliver brand? Um, That's a good one because before I did the fashion show, I was fashion merchandising. Um, that was my concentration. And I didn't know that I could actually sew and design mm -hmm. clothing. So I think that that's like a very rare and valuable skill to have. So if I can like continue to hone in on that skill and then have something to show for it, which I think would be the designs from the show, I think that could really help me grow my brand to be, to just have more value overall. Okay. So you're able to develop a whole new skill set that is a game changer for not only the industry that you work in, but the output that you can now produce in that. Um, mm -hmm. What about, uh, I'm also curious, I'm definitely curious about Sierra. So Sierra, what is it that you know that you can now take away from uh, doing research? I know now that um, I can, Working in the lab that I worked in showed that I can work with other people and like I can gather a group of people to help me with a component of my experiment. Like one of the components of my experiment was collecting fecal samples from the goats at the Dell State Research Farm. And let me tell you, it was a task, but I had the ability to gather a group of people and kind of instruct them on what to do, like in the spur of the moment. Um, I also found out that I, no matter what obstacle I encounter in the lab, that I can overcome it. And I feel like it also gave me like a sense of achievement when I overcame that obstacle. So and just having experience in a lab doing research is also something that'll make me stand out to say, like for me, I'm a pre-vet major, say to a vet school or a graduate school or a master's program and stuff like that. Okay. So definitely more marketable when it comes to competition. Yes. Okay. So uh, this is something that uh, Mr. Hall had talked about last year. Greatness is accomplished by consistency. Um, so don't stress out about being um, amazing or perfect every day. And it really is about being consistent. Uh, focus on executing all requests to the best of your ability. And sometimes you have to just let it go. Um, ways to, to diminish your work, your hard work done to build your brand. Derogatory posts on social media. Um, a lot of times I think the spoken rule, which used to be, um, is that you don't talk about politics and religion. Um, but, you know, one thing that I do notice, I can't even talk about that when that's coming out on Netflix. Um, but there, what I, what I, I just didn't know that people really cataloged other people's stuff for years on end to where now you see all these different posts coming out about what people really thought 10, 20 years ago um either thinking that they were entitled and in the sense of they can just say whatever they want to say um but not realizing that you know their thoughts had been um archived um so definitely be mindful of that and then also be mindful because i am going to skip into not just the theoretical part of branding we're going to go into linkedin and see some different posts and things of that nature um but um but yes, there are some times where you just don't need to engage in some things that you're passionate about that are actual posts that somebody might have posted that you might actually even agree to. Sometimes you can just call them up and have the conversation um, because it's not always fair, um, but death by association is still alive and well. So um, drastic changes to your work behavior or quality of work, staying engaged with uh, the rumor mill employees, which can definitely show lack of maturity or development. Uh, brand building as a student, get involved in campus groups and activities, um, take on leadership roles, campus student organization, national societies, um, spearhead special projects that may be available with a faculty member or within the college slash university. 
that's that whole networking and getting out there and just talking to people. Um, that's the only way that somebody's gonna know what you need to grow and or to get where you want to get to. Um, create a LinkedIn page, of course. Consistently update with your uh, collegiate involvement, whether it's student orgs, internships, stay linked to faculty, staff, and student leadership. Um, greater insight into professional research or scholarship opportunities. That is so true. Um, take uh, free slash low cost certification courses. And there are a lot of them. There are some on LinkedIn. I know Harvard University, they're called MOOCs. I can't, I, I know that that's the actual acronym because that was my brother's name. Uh, <laughs> the nickname was Mookie. Um, so I forgot, but they are free. I know I've signed up for some of them um, just to get an understanding. I know that the one that I did dealt um, a lot of, a lot around law and higher education. Um, so those are there um, because also that's an opportunity to add something to um, to your resume as well as to your LinkedIn. I, this lady, we were having a conversation at dinner. She was serving us. And the only thing I could think about was my charbroiled oysters. But we were talking and she was saying, well, my full-time job is elections. And I started laughing. I said, gee, I said, I'm an election official too. I said, I almost got rid of it, but I realized that I could also advertise it on LinkedIn. And so there are little things like that that you don't really even think matter, but they do because they build upon what you're, who you are and, um, and your character and interests and becoming as relatable to uh, individuals that are seeking you out as much as possible. Nobody wants to sit there and look at each other and not really have a constructive conversation i.e. what you do in interviews. Um, you can always meet with the dean and or find uh, where the dean's at through different, um, uh, what, are they, what, are, what would we call it, different programs that are ongoing within the college that she has to be there for and or uh, the dean of the College of Business, um, a chairperson, um, a professor. I put in red staff because um, we had done a survey, the university did a survey about two or three years ago. And one of the things that students wanted more was a connection with staff, individuals like myself. Um, but if you also think about it, there are different professionals in different administrative positions that you can learn from, i.e. if you are a computer science major, you could always work with Miss um, Andrea Wilson or IT major. Um, that works for a Lucian banner that runs our whole IT system, uh, our, our, our whole IT sector at the university by seeking these people out. If you're an accounting major, there's a whole accounting department. Um, you just never know. Um, put a name with a face for new opportunities or contacts, um, contact you with any challenges you might face. If you guys notice with all the constant contacts that I send you, there's always a push from administration to find students to get involved, um, like that Comores opportunity, I think that was last week. Um, develop a mutually beneficial relationship. You don't want to just call on somebody when you need them. And that doesn't mean that you need to always call on them and ask them if they need something. Um, it's just more of trying to get to know each other, um, just really through conversation or just stop by. Ability to advise, um, to advise you about your plan of study. Um, ask about previous student success and also how they accomplished it. And that's also a really good way of you utilizing LinkedIn too. Um, I'm pretty sure people like Miss uh, Alicia Davis, who's a vet major at, um, at Virginia Tech, you know, after seeing her on here, connecting with her on LinkedIn, that's a really easy way to just shoot out a real quick, hey, how are you? This is what I'm going through within my plan of study. How did you get through it? Um, things of that nature to just make general conversation. Impressing employers as a student, your LinkedIn page is your virtual professional portfolio to employers. A lot of times we shy away from uh, different things, especially like posting because we might not know how to or what's the more, more most formal way of posting. Future employers always look at your social media starting with LinkedIn first. Um, one of the things that one of my close friends did, and I know she did it for over a year that she was looking for a job, but she just came off of all um, social media, period, um, LinkedIn, all of it, um, because there there still is bias that can be found, um, yeah, um, with these different types of social media. Research uh, individuals on LinkedIn with careers you aspire to one day to have. Um, do not be afraid to message them for recommendations on your career journey. 
um, to establish a potential mentorship relationship. And then also, I always remember that when vet majors come in, I always say, hey, um, actually, no, when I used to counsel uh, high school students about going to college, whether they were going to attend Dell State or not, um, I'd always talk to them about moving backwards, right? So moving it from their career um, and then seeing if that institution has an alignment, what they need to be prepared to go into that career and then moving backwards and uh, to are your high school requirements and alignment to get into the institution that you want to. So this was Waters Corporation that I was looking through this morning from last year's PowerPoint. And I said to myself, well, then why not use um, if you know you want to work for Johnson and Johnson, if you know you want to work for um, Archer Daniels Midland, uh, you know you want to work for Syngenta, sometimes you might want to pull um, their success model, right? So then you can actually start to build backwards on what you want your LinkedIn profile to look like. And or if you're missing some different things as far as experiences, what and where you need to be identifying right now in your uh, undergraduate experience to build those uh, to build those things. Tips for branding yourself on social media, define your branding goals, um, your areas of expertise, develop a strong brand uh, statement, um, be ubiquitous. Uh, and I say that within uh, with being modest, um, a lot of times people think, you know, being ubiquitous or being seen everywhere that you'll get the most attention and the opportunities. And that's not always true. Uh, because for me, that doesn't give me time to miss you or to find you somewhat intriguing in the sense of, yeah, why would I? Because I know I'm going to see you in the next five minutes again. Um, so establish a personal branding strategy, ensure consistency in your brand voice, image, and tone, build and share great content, update your profile links regularly, import your contacts, take advantage of social media features. Be active and responsive on all your social media channels. Uh, join niche groups, which can be um, also sometimes called SIGs, special interest groups, um, because, of course, if you have individuals that are more like minded and or if you all are interested in the same thing, you never know what opportunities that they actually might know about. Identify and engage with influencers. And then just moving into this information, and I know a lot of students have seen it. But it is also tried and true. So as I move through this, if some of you guys would like to do screenshots, you can go right ahead. Um, but uh, that LinkedIn building a great profile. Um, we want to see um, an informative profile headline. If you don't have an inform informative profile headline and or this to me always seems like where students can get a little um, sketchy um, because it's almost like the objective statement in a resume. So if you feel as though you don't have enough experience or yeah, or enough experiences that also um, are in alignment with where you want to go career wise, one, you should be working on getting it um, while you're still, you know, in your undergraduate experience. And also sometimes you can just put it aside, um, pick an appropriate photo, show off your education, um, develop a, a professional summary, and then also fill skills and expertise with keywords. Anybody know where you can actually find keywords? Job descriptions that you're trying to apply for. Exactly, exactly. So that's where you can find keywords. And then those keywords also help you build your cover letter, um, your resume. And also what I've learned from the different keywords, if you mix those keywords with the actual job itself, those keywords guide you on how to write and or when I say how, meaning what you will write about. So be mindful of that as well. Update your status regularly. So you show your connectedness, uh, collect diverse recommendations, um, claim a unique LinkedIn uh, URL. And the other thing I like about this is sometimes, well, I know it is hard for me. I usually have to need my resume to then also update it, but I just noticed the more and more I actually uh, am logging my work on LinkedIn, it's easier for me to just go ahead and go on LinkedIn and then say, okay, I need X, Y, and Z that goes, uh, that's in accordance with what this job is asking of me. And I can definitely uh, update it that way. Oh, I think I might have missed a couple of them. Uh, 
Oh, collect diverse recommendations. Um, like I said, those can be things like from, uh, I don't know, it could be from volunteer work that you've done at church, at school. It could be from a previous employer that you had in high school and or in college. It can be from a, a current professor that you know, uh, that you know notices that you have actual promise within your field of study. It could be from an administrator that you've developed a relationship. It can go on and on and on. Um, but just make sure, like I said, that it's diverse because then the employer gets more of a 360 degree uh, view of who you actually are. Claim your unique uh, LinkedIn URL, which you can actually utilize to um, send out, um, yeah, to market yourself on your email signature, things of that nature. And then, of course, always make sure that you try your best to share your work. And there are also professionals like myself. I know I work with students a lot of times that just don't understand in the sense of like, hey, I got accepted to a study abroad program. How do I market this on LinkedIn? Hey, I got uh, accepted to graduate school. How do I market it uh, on LinkedIn? Um, yeah, so just like I said, also reach out. Uh, LinkedIn profile checklist. If you guys would like to screenshot this if you need it and or also if you need uh, this PowerPoint, um, I can always PDF it and send it to any student. Just make sure that you email me for um, to remind me to uh, definitely to send it to you. Another uh, portion of the check check checklist for LinkedIn that delves into the different sections that you can add and or take away um, can be education, volunteer experiences, skills and expertise, honors and awards, courses, projects, recommendations. Are there any questions about this section before we move on? Okay. If we're talking about now moving into your branding, I know for me, I was a part of LinkedIn for a very, very long time. I didn't get serious or read up on it, uh, <laughs> on it until this time last year when it was a requirement for my students to do it. And I said to myself, well, if I'm going to require them to do something, one, I need to be doing it. And two, I need to learn as much about it so that I can set a standard for them um because who wants to be embarrassed i know i don't so one thing that i found um when i was putting this together uh with it was uh on canva when they were talking about branding um was communicating with um your actual audience and i like that here you can have your honesty and or vulnerability um as a professional and or who you are um smart funny and then your actual brand voice can be found here. And I'm hoping that I kind of did that. Um, so this is, I guess it's kind of like a little interactive game. Um, I can call on some people or people can call out. It's up to you. But it's really like all hell no um, or let it fly. And so these are different. I know when I started putting together my LinkedIn and being on LinkedIn, uh, I would see different posts and I would just be like, oh, no, like that's a that's not really good marketing of yourself because some things can become ambiguous and some things can become nuanced. And so I want you guys' opinion on, you know, all oh, heck nah or, you know, yeah, it should fly. This one, I had a fourth brain surgery that went successful once again. Um, when I found when I first received the news and he goes on and on and on and he's a realtor. So is this something that should fly or no? Nah? No. No. And no no, way. why not? I feel like that's like kind of too personal to be posting on LinkedIn, like Facebook, where like you're there with like your friends and your family. Like I could see it like going on Facebook, but not on LinkedIn. Okay. It has nothing to do with his profession. Exactly. And like Alexander just said, uh, it doesn't, the content doesn't relate to LinkedIn. And personally, me, when people started doing this in social media, I was, I've always been turned off because one, it's attention seeking. Two, why not just say like, can I get prayers? Um, but to go through the whole, um, yeah, we have to see it. I don't think that that's fair to your viewer. 
Um, what about this one? Because this one I actually got wrong last year uh, when I was working with some individuals. Um, one of the great programs I and my team at DC, um, DOC, Department of Corrections, were able to implement. A huge shout out to Judge Zia Farwakwi, Farwakwa, Farwakwi, uh, for partnering with us and championing this type of work in our students to our partners at MIT. Programs like this are life changing. And so uh, this is an individual, a young lady, she's a visionary and innovative educator, and it's pretty much a program that she was able to implement. Is this suitable for LinkedIn? So Alexander said, I gotta get better at this chat feature. I say let it fly. They focus on innovative education, and this is definitely a program that shows that. Okay, Elijah, why do you say let it fly? Um, I say I say let it fly because it's something that's being productive uh, um with regards to people that want to make change with their lives. Okay. It's it shouldn't fly or anything. Anybody else say that it shouldn't fly? Okay, um, it should fly. When I first looked at it, I thought that it shouldn't fly because I was only reading this. Like they're locked up in DC and I'm just like, that's what kind of caught me because I just felt like, you know, you can be locked up but you're more than just locked up. There's all different types of aspects to a human being um, other than um, mistakes that they might have made. But it is definitely something that should be marketed because it probably should be implemented in, in more than just uh, one Department of Corrections. Um, so it's trend setting. What about this one? Personal news of this uh, young lady being married. Should you let it fly or no? Nah? I think Who's she might have that on her Facebook and not LinkedIn. Exactly. That's <laughs> true too. So it's it could be on the potentially on the wrong uh platform. Uh Alexander said um it's too personal. Um Percival or Percival? Percival? Yeah. What is your thought on this? Um I wouldn't I wouldn't post anything like that on my LinkedIn. I feel like this is something that you could keep to yourself or on your own personal page, but for LinkedIn is more I think it's professional. You guys are extremely correct. And if you go back to um the rules on writing a resume, you know, you don't put on there your photo, your religion. Um I hope you use just one color of ink, which should be black or blue, but um but also you don't you don't put on there that you're a mother um because you can also be screened out and so if we're talking about linkedin it's really like a new way of marketing yourselves and being picked up by an employer somebody could all of a sudden that you know she could apply to i don't know delaware state university i go on here as a potential supervisor i see that she's married okay so then that tells me does she have kids are they planning on kids does that mean that, you know, with her having kids that, and this is things that supervisors do at, and to be really real, it's not right. But people get the uh, perception that if you don't have kids, you have all the time in the world to do even 10 times as much work that you're being paid for. And then also some people will think, oh, if you do have kids, you can't actually get the work done because you have kids. So you guys are definitely right. Definitely wrong platform for this. Um, I skipped some of them because of timing, so I think this is the last uh, stream. Is this one uh, correct? There is a QR code, and he is a realtor. Did the caption specify what the QR code is for? No. Did you just... That's one thing that bothered me. Yeah, then I'd have to say no. If he doesn't elaborate on what it's for, then I feel like you shouldn't be posting it. Okay. Anybody else? I also agree because it could be anything like someone could use the QR code and it just be some like random website. Like there's no real specificity for what it's used for. Yes. 
So my thing is this, I, this is actually my favorite one. It made me think, and actually I ended up doing something like it with a job where they had asked me to do a writing prompt. And I'm not gonna lie, what I, I got it from this. I think it's genius because I was nosy. So I pushed <laughs> I did the QR code, but it goes directly to all of his like web page and everything about what he does as a realtor. So it just might be missing that one last piece of what actually it is. Maybe he thought that it was kind of um, implied, but I got the same, like, it just made me think outside the box because I'd gotten a job uh, where they had, not a job, but they had asked for a writing prompt. They only wanted 300 words. I can't even say my name in 300 words. And um, it might've been three or 500 words. But what I thought about it, I said, wow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline everything that they're asking for. And then my last piece was actually one of my empower engagements, right? Because they were asking me what I could bring to the table that is in alignment with higher education, but that could also market their government agency um, to make the institution more interdisciplinary, but then also funnel other disciplines into that agency. So I said, well, if I did an EPA roundtable, why not just end it with the link to where they now have to go to, to that um, empower engagement? So I don't know. I, like I said, it's one of my favorite, but it is, uh, it, it should be marketed better in the sense of knowing what it is, because who wants to run into spam? Um, what about this one? The Terrain Theory Podcast. The picture is very unprofessional. Yes. Anybody else? So it's just the photo of him. He is selling his, uh, I don't even know what it is. It's one of our past graduates. I'm going to keep it real. Uh, but, but he is selling something. I kind of feel like the um, the picture is unprofessional. Like, mm -hmm. Just because he's selling something doesn't really mean that this is the way that he should sell it to possible employers or even like people that he's currently working with. He could have just taken like a picture of his product and posted it. True. He's what not is the whole ruggedness? He's not even in shirt. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but is LinkedIn a social media platform where you can like so my thing is this it goes deeper than that my issue is the actual title of his episode 34 it's on ecological consciousness CMOS and that's actually what that is that he's selling and why the globalist elite have already lost now in the days and times of Shark Tank who might end up being kind of the one that might invest in your product. Might be somebody that's an elite in the sense of working for a bank that can actually invest. So what I'm saying is, is that just the title alone of this podcast is complete contention. Um, so, okay, so it's a no. Um, and then this one, I hope more people get news like this today. So he finally got his job offer letter from his new tech job. It pushes him over a hundred thousand a year. And then he gives a little bit of a testimony about his past. Too much information. Way too much information. Why? He's um he's basically broadcasting his salary. Yes. And not only that, what happens when somebody screenshots it and it comes up in the future when he might be worth 125000 but somebody sees that you're already at six figures and they want to negotiate down. So, again, and also, you guys, please be mindful about this piece right here. I know I was working with a student. And you see how he has like a whole testimony. And this is not just Curtis. This is, I see this a lot. I um, mean, I also see it a lot with students to where they feel like this space right here is where they should put down everything that they've done. I'm an alpha. Uh, and then they'll have, you know, I studied abroad in 2019. And then please keep it plain and simple because that's almost like 
knowing what's in the uh knowing what's inside the package before you get to open it you open it and it's like okay well either i see the same thing or i kind of wasted my time because it's not what i thought it would be um so what should i post to engage and what time is it it is 11 48 and i'm going to run through these real quick and i'm utilizing myself as an example uh because of how i built uh what i post because I read what LinkedIn suggested. Um, and so, like I said, up until last year, I did not post. It was just a bare page, might have had a photo, but there's really nothing there. Um, what I can now say is, is from posting, not only have I gotten engagement with university presidents, uh, past colleagues that I didn't even realize were on LinkedIn, but one of my colleagues that knows them uh, liked it, and so it went up and, and broadcast to their network, and they're like, oh, there's Meredith. I haven't seen Meredith in so long. I've used it to uh, market these Empower Engagements and the scholarship program to get students to um, get engaged with both programs that are Dell State students that have either connected or follow me. Um, yeah, job offers, you'd be surprised because you're actually marketing your knowledge, skills, and ability in real time. Um, but even more than that, um, you're able to actually become uh, somewhat of an influencer uh, within your own craft. So when you take out, I know I do a lot of reading. And so what I do is, and another thing that I love, and I can't go into all the features because we're pretty much out of time, but you know, these impressions that you see, they drive where you go to next, right? So if you're seeing impressions that are one and two and 10, that's clearly saying that people in your network, you're not engaging and they're not really feeling what you have going on. And the, also the other good thing about the impressions is, is that when you push this view, you see the um, analytics between the size of the company from the people that are looking at you, you see the uh, positions of the titles of the people uh, that are looking at you. Uh, you see the region in which they're coming from. Um, and you see the actual organizations. And so there's been times where I've seen repeated interests from different organizations that let me know that clearly there might be opportunities there that I need to at least review. Um, but for the most part, these different opportunities are things that I'm interested in learning about so that I'm always up on my game. And so I make sure that I also broadcast them to my whole network because nine times out of 10, my network is made up of people like myself that are in higher education, diversity, equity, inclusion, agriculture, um, you name it. Um, so these are just some different types of examples. Your work accomplishments. So I do spotlight, I know at this point in time, because uh, this was last year, I spotlighted different scholars and of course, I did that because on LinkedIn, I literally interface with the United States Department of Agriculture. They're the ones that are funding these students. So why should they not see where their money's going to and the progression uh, that the students are having? Um, so that's also important as well. Uh, also different work accomplishments. I know I had talked about, you know, I am literally a mentor. So I talked about one of my previous students that I still mentor. Um, I talked about a graduate that I had been mentoring since she was doing Ag Discovery um, and where she's at now. Um, if you're ever featured, it's also an excellent opportunity um, to do a story. When I write um, stories, I really, it's just basic. The what, where, uh, who, and why. And then the last aspect, which matters more than anything, if you're going to post anything, first start off with the impact. What did this what did this experience have as far as an impact on my student development? What did it have on uh, the career that I'm aspiring to actually um, take on? What impact did, does it have on me being prepared for where I'm going to go to in the in the in the in the future? Um, so really, just keep those things in mind. And once you have that template down, you can easily write it up really really quick within less than. Uh, one to three paragraphs. Industry engagement, of course, these themes are centered around my professional uh, career. So just like I said, also be mindful, you can, you will do the exact same thing uh, when you see, uh, when you develop these themes, because once you develop the themes, 
it makes it easier for you to actually to post and to identify in your day-to-day -day walk, in your day-to-day -day life, what you actually should be posting. Or, oh, wait, I could post about this. Or, oh, wait, I could post about that. Um, so this is all industry engagement. And then also work, meaning my empower engagements. Like I said before, you want to definitely try to make sure that you're utilizing different hashtags to um, so make sure that what you are posting goes as far as possible. Um, and then also, it's also inviting in the sense of um, individuals that would also like to partake um, in my engagements that are within the institution and or outside. I know I posted this one last night and um, Coach Hicks, who's a really good friend of mine, she just posted um, right underneath the one for today. She was like, hey, um, can um, faculty and staff um, uh, attend? And I was like, of course. I was like, many have attended. So you just never know. Um, colleague support. You always want to show colleague support because um, I think uh, Dr. Candace Boyd, who came in with the EPA and all of the employers, because I always ask so that you guys hear it. The number one thing that employers need for out of out of an individual is that they're willing to do uh, teamwork slash collaborate. So by showing colleague support is definitely that way of showing that you're able to um, definitely push people forward um, and not just yourself. Your knowledge base again, um, that's important. Are you reading up if you're a computer science major? What are you reading up on? I know for me, I was a recruiter and I'm still in higher education. So these are different things that I follow. And then as soon as I know that something's available, I always push it out to my network as well. And then your professional philosophy. I know um, a young lady, I'm not going to say her name, but she's in fashion. And we had the really good discussion on philosophy and why it's important that your philosophy should appear in a portfolio and or a resume. And I thought more about it later on, because what if you don't have that piece, but maybe somebody as competitive as fashion is, maybe they see your work and they're like, uh, not good work, but then also they see your philosophy is in totally in alignment with theirs. And they say, wow, I know I got good work ethic. She has the same philosophy. Okay, I probably could take her underneath my wing and show her some of the things that she might need to tweak, um, but still stay unique. And that's also the same way uh, of when you're thinking about a future employer and a supervisor that ends up seeing all of your documents. That's why it's important that they're flawless because they will never see you first. They'll see those documents. And also with a graduate advisor, like I said before, if you're going to go to grad school, the only way that you're even accepted into the institution is if you have a faculty member that reviews your documents, understands where you're going, and then also has somewhat of an understanding of your philosophy and your interest in what they have going on when it's when it comes to topics. Um, yeah, and so your thought can be out there as well. Things that you're liking that you actually do agree on and or also things like I said that you can believe that you believe in whether it's centered around your moral ethics and or values. Mm -hmm.